General Kale Kaihura holds the record as Uganda's longest serving Inspector General of Police since the country's police force was instituted in 1906. Now, New Vision TV looks at the general's entire term at the police and also the final 40 days in office, which, as some religious faiths believe, actually constitute the end of a life or an era. Uganda's longest serving Inspector General of Police, General Kale Kaihura, has finally been removed from office by the man who once described him as a good cadre of the ruling National Resistance Movement Party, President Yoram Museveni. Kaihura is not the first military officer to head the police as some of his colonial predecessors were British military men. His immediate predecessor, General Katumba Wamala, was the first military man to head the police in independence times after a judicial commission of inquiry in the late 90s found many senior police officers too tainted to lead reforms in the force. Katumba returned to the army in 2005 and Museveni appointed Kaihura to replace him. When Kaihura took office as Inspector General of Police, his first assignment was to arrest the opposition leader, Dr. Chizo Besije, who had just returned from exile in South Africa in readiness to stand for elections against President Yoram Museveni for the second time in 2006 after their vicious presidential contest of 2001. With his first assignment, Kaihura's fate was sealed as the whole of his 13 years as IGP have been characterized by fighting Besije. Yet Kaihura has been fired without successfully containing him, who recently launched another phase of fighting the NRM government, Tam Tubalemese, meaning let us fail them. As a corporate body, you will be risking the wrath of the people of Uganda. However, General Kaihura has done a tremendous job growing the police force, though it has been overshadowed by dealing with NRM government opponents. He also spearheaded the containing of Amama Mbabazi, who wanted to take NRM leadership. During his time as Inspector General of Police, Kare Kaihura has expanded the police force from below 20,000 to nearly 50,000 personnel. He pushed for the tripling of the police budget as well as buying modern, sophisticated equipment. Kaihura created several specialized units like the Marine Force, the Forensics Directorate, the Environment Police, Counterterrorism, Tourism Police, Cybercrime Unit, and rejuvenated core units like Fire Brigade and Flying Squad. However, Kaihura's critics have never forgiven him for disbanding the special branch, which was responsible for detecting crimes against the state and reassigning its functions to different units. Under Kaihura, the number of women in police ranks has grown tremendously and he created a special department to cater for their needs even as they serve in all units at par with the men. The growth of the Child and Family Protection Unit is one of the greatest achievements of the Uganda police in recent years as it resolves over 20,000 cases in a year which the courts of law just would not have the capacity to handle. Kale Kaihura has also done a huge job integrating Uganda into regional and international security systems. Uganda is a key player in Eastern African Police Chiefs Cooperation Organization that does a big job fighting cross-border crime. Kaihura actually spearheaded the creation of the continental police system, Afripol, with his Algerian counterpart. General Kaihura's huge achievements at the helm of the police force, however, tend to be eclipsed by the negative developments in national security in which the police is the lead agency. <laughs> Government spokesman Ofono Pondo said that President Museveni started doubting General Kaihura's competence to handle some important aspects of his job two years ago, but has been giving him an opportunity to correct them. Indeed, the past two years have seen security lapses manifesting in assassinations of a dozen Muslim clerics, top prosecutor John Kagezi climaxing with the daylight public murder of the face of the police spokesman AIGP Andrew Felix Kawesi last March 17th. During the vigil at Kawesi's home, Museveni bluntly told the IGP that police was infiltrated by criminals and warned him in the open, thus, Kale. Clean up your house. The police has been infiltrated by criminals. Kale, you must clean the police. But after Museveni's public warning to Kaihura, things just continued going south. <laughs> Scores of alleged suspects in the Kawesi murder, mostly Muslims, were rounded up and tortured only for court to order that they be compensated for the torture. 
Gory photos of one victim, the mayor of Kamwenge, showed holes apparently drilled in his legs. Then gruesome murders after torture and rape of young girls and ladies, at least two dozen of them, took place in Nansana and Entebbe. Then the bizarre Border Border 2010 group took on a larger-than-life status, beating up school children and their teachers at Busega as they went to perform at police day celebrations. The Border Border 2010 gang also beat up the police officer who was accompanying the children. When police officers from Natete police station arrived to intervene, the Border Border 2010 men also beat them up. Then the Border Border 2010 declared that they would break more jaws of police officers in future. <laughs> The Border Border 2010 gang leader, Abdullah Chitata, while known to be a close associate of General Kaihura, continued to behave like he was alone to himself. Celebrated crime buster, ASP Mohamed Shirimila had a clash with Chitata and Shirimila found himself transferred from the busy old Kampala Division Command to the remote Buyende Police Division. And as fate would have it, when General Kaihura appeared before members of parliament mid-January 2018, he defended and praised the Border Border 2010 members for having contained political opposition protesters in 2016 election year. <laughs> As real fate would have it, that weekend Abdallah Chitata was arrested by military intelligence with internal security organization and implicated in the kidnap, the gruesome murder of a case clinic accountant whose burnt body was recovered in a bush and his car's number plates changed by the border border 2010 killers who had robbed the money the deceased was going to bank. The CMI and ESO agents moved in to clean the police about six months after Kawesa's murder. They started by arresting senior police officers accused of engaging in highly treasonous acts of abducting refugees and a UNHCR protection and selling them to a foreign country which they had fled from. Besides abduction of refugees by senior police officers, other senior police officers were named in the abduction, robbing and forcefully attempting to deport some Korean investors. Meanwhile, the incident that must have infuriated Museveni beyond tolerance came as he delivered his New Year message in which he assured Ugandans of better security come 2018. That night, panga welding killers attacked villages in Bokoma Simbi, slaughtering five people, including a retired senior superintendent of police, the late Dennis Sebuguao. <laughs> President Museveni personally went to Bukoma Simbi and personally spent hours interviewing witnesses and survivors like he had done with the entire multiple girls' murders. Although General Kaihura tagged along and attended the president's investigative interviews, it was clear to most observers that the IGP's goose was cooked. <laughs> At the NRM victory celebrations uh, in Arua, January 26th, President Museveni enlisted 10 strategic bottlenecks the NRM has been tackling for 50 years, and bottleneck number two was a weak state, especially the army, which needed restructuring. Museveni had deployed army generals to reform the police and the first one, Katumba Wamala, had discharged his assignment with distinction. In fact, the military training of police officers so as to deal with hardened criminals was started by Katumba Wamala, for which he was generally praised. But under Kaihura, it was dubbed militarization of the police because of the political face the police attained in his time. After the 20th January arrest of Abdallah Chitata, the following week saw the rounding of more border border 2010 strongmen by CMI and ISO agents. The countdown of General Kaihura's 40 days had started. More bizarre incidents took place. <laughs> ASP Mohamed Shilimina was summoned from Buyende to face the police disciplinary committee at headquarters. Chilimina started spitting fire in an unprecedented defiance by a serving officer. He kept denouncing the false leadership, accusing them of harboring criminals. <laughs> At the height of his social media war on the force, Chilimina was arrested dramatically from his Bulenga home as police and the television cameras used housebreaking tools to cut through his metallic door. Shirimina's heavily pregnant wife was reportedly assaulted by Border Border 2010 personnel. In the police court, Shirimina continued defiantly accusing his superiors of criminality and was incarcerated in the Narufenya detention facility. 
His wife delivered while he was in detention and he defiantly named the newborn son after the fallen Andrew Felix Kawesi. In the final week of the 40 days since the crackdown on Border Border 2010, it appeared that security was in a nosedive. A three-week kidnap ordeal of a young woman, Susan Magara, ended in her gruesome murder. The killers had used 17 different SIM cards during their crime, which made the public skeptical of the compulsory SIM card registration that the now ex-IGP had pushed as an answer to crime following the slaying of AIGP Kawesi. To further muddy the waters, one Brian White, a so-called philanthropist with an unclear background, started his own crusade to fight crime by paying criminals to abandon crime. After protracted police versus ISO fight of former criminals turned state reformers called Chifesi that had ended with police being forced to release the men it had arrested, it was no longer clear who was in charge of public safety. <laughs> Finally, on Sunday 4th March, Museveni welded the axe, bringing General Kaihura's long tenure as IGP to an unhappy ending. Kaihura's sacking must have been even the more painful coming after he had been given a new contract just last year. Since the president had lost confidence in his man, it would have been more merciful to just not renew his contract so he could start afresh elsewhere without the baggage of being on record as being sacked when the public security was at its worst under his watch. A week after Kaihura's dismissal, his successor still had to deal with matters arising from the informal management style. Besides the purported 11 million crime preventers whose status still needs clarification, Kaihura's Kenyan social media executive became an issue after President Uhuru Kenyatta's Twitter account suddenly erroneously became IGP Okotho Chola's account.